Hi. Um. It's me. My hands are so big. But I feel like I've been gone for a long time. Okay, um. I think the last video upload I had was 10 days ago. But I'm here now. Uh, I don't know. I just don't think I could be the vlogger that vlogs constantly, constantly, constantly. I have other stuff to do, but I still want to come in and give y'all like little updates and all of that good stuff. And I'm trying something different. Instead of having to add music to my vlog, I'm trying to play it in the background. And hopefully y'all can hear me, but I think y'all should be able to hear me. And you might not even hear the music, but I don't know. But anyway, so, um, as y'all can see, I showed y'all the room in my shop that I used to be scared to sleep in. Now I've finally fixed it up like a, um, real room. And I'm in love. Um, I think my favorite part would have to be where I have a little table with my devotional books on it. And the candle and... Um, Jesus hand. I'm gonna give y'all another little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is my favorite part. But I got that picture off Etsy. The table is from Amazon. I'm gonna link everything that I got down below. Because everything either came from Amazon, Walmart, or Dollar General. So you know I won't be able to mark. mark link the Dollar General and Walmart stuff. Well, maybe I can try to find it on my Walmart app and copy the link, I'll try to do it. But mostly everything I got was from Amazon because I didn't have a headboard at first. Because it's a queen size bed, but I finessed it to make it a little longer because if I had to put it the straight way, the bed was gonna be in the way of the door. So I put it the long way and then I just got a, head, a king size headboard to make it look I like that and I think it's nice. I like the headboard. I think the headboard wasn't but a hundred dollars. And I got these little pillows from Walmart. This one is from Walmart. This one from Walmart. And the gold ones are from Dollar General. Um, my white comforter. And the white pillows come from Amazon. And those curtains are from Walmart. It was one, I thought it was two. But I just split it and it had like some gold curtain ties, so I just put that on it. And that mirror come from Amazon too. But in that corner where the mirror and the dresser at, I want to put like some pampas, like a pampas plant in the corner. May I probably put pampas in both corners because they look kind of empty to me. But I don't never have time to go buy any. But luckily, my friend found some and she got it for me. So I'm gonna get it from her Wednesday. But then I'm gonna need to get some more for the other one. But anyway, today is Sunday, so a little update on me. I got rebaptized today. Um, I felt like with my journey that I needed to rededicate my life, even though, I mean, you know, I restarted my relationship with God in Christ anyway. I just felt like I needed to um do that part, but when I first started, I knew I wasn't ready to do that. So... I went to church last Sunday, and you know how they do the doors of the church is open. I went up, and I got baptized this Sunday. Um, it was a good feeling. Um, thanks for all my family and friends that came out to support me. Uh, what else? I mean, I felt like that was the next step in my relationship with Christ, besides doing the videos and you know, and trying to help the other people and spreading his word, I had to refine myself within him. So I feel like by re baptized, that's the second start of my new start with him. If that makes sense to y'all. Um, I haven't been on here doing devotion in a while. I even started a new Bible challenge and it's where you read 10 pages a day, 15 minutes of worship, 15 minutes of praise and I think like an hour without social media. And y'all, I was doing good. But then the enemy tried to get at me. My flesh was getting to me. And I had to pray that off. Also, I haven't read today. So I'm going to do the devotion and stuff with y'all today. 
but um yeah the he it's like after i said i was gonna get baptized it's like my urge to read my bible and to stay in the word just disappeared so it's like i was making myself read my bible but i already knew what it was anyway um but i mean y'all know how they go the walk you know how it goes and you know how the enemy gonna try to stop you from doing everything that you're trying to do for Christ, but you can't let him stop you. And I know it's naked. I'm gonna get some pictures for back there, and I don't have nothing on that wall, so I'm gonna put pictures over there. But yeah, I I just I just been working with myself and trying to work on my relationship and not letting my flesh and the enemy get to me. Because y'all know from the warfare video, the warfare not only just like the stuff I was saying about how I used to be scared to stay out here. It's also spiritually and like they'll throw stuff at you and send stuff your way and try to make you not want to read your Bible and just have your mind thinking all kind of stuff when you know it's not true and it just it's a lot. But you have to know the difference. You have to have discernment to know that there's not oh God. And it's of the enemy. So, um, yeah, but I got baptized today. And um, I'm proud. So, oh, and I, this, that little board thing I got on my own address is from Walmart too. Everything on the nightstand is from Walmart, except for the little flower thing with the, um, the fragrance thing, I got it on Amazon, but I link it too. And it's a girl from where I stay. She made this acrylic thing for me. It came with two coasters, but I don't use the coasters. But um, I think it's just cute on my bed since it's gold, and I can keep my remotes and stuff on. It. Um, what else? Um, I haven't been feeling too good lately, but you know, I gotta just push forward. And not let the enemy get in my head that way either. I just try to block it out. And don't talk about my gown because I wind down from the day. At least my head calm this time. So, and I did the devotional book in the kitchen. So I'll be back. Yeah, I'm too lazy to, um, I hope it ain't too late. But anyway, I left my tripod that I sit on the floor at my mama house, so I'm too lazy to walk in the back door and get it. But today is day 21 in this devotional book. And it's, I haven't read it yet, so I'm reading it with y'all. And it says, the title of it is Just Wait. And it's still the same book. And my friend found the other one and got it for me. But the um, starting verse of scripture for it is, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And it comes from Psalms 27, 13, and 14. And let me see. Oh, it's just one big paragraph this time. So, I'm going to read. I'll probably just like read to a point, and when I feel like. I feel like it's something I need to say about it. I'll say it or when I get done, I'll just do that. But I'm going to read the scripture one more time. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, O Lord. Psalms 27, 13, 14. It says, when we look in the Bible at stories of men like David, it gives us hope in our time of despair. 
Rome 15 and 4 tells us that who, whatsoever things were written a foreign time where other scriptures might have hope. I'm already messing up. That's not what it say. When we look in the Bible at stories of men like David, it gives us hope in our times of despair. Romans 15 and 4 tells us that whatsoever things were written at four time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Here is the story of a man who was anointed to be king over the nation of Israel as a boy and had not waited till he was 30 years old to step into that promise. Although his life during those years of waiting was filled with grief and uncertainty, somewhere in the midst of it all, he penned these words that were written within him. David with those words showed that in despite of his circumstances, all the pain and loneliness that he felt while running for his life and waiting to be king, he still trusted God and believed that he would indeed experience the goodness of the Lord. Not after he left this life, but he said, in the land of the living, meaning he trusted God to bring to pass what he had promised him while he was yet alive on this earth. David gives us this time, this same word of encouragement today. Just wait on the Lord. Just wait on the Lord even when times seem hard that you can't seem to see your way out. He said that God will strengthen your heart if you just wait. Some days I look around as God is taking me through this process of development and have to draw on these very words of David. When times seem to be unbearable, if you will still just call on him, this is the time that God will give you to to give you the courage to just be still and lift up your eyes to him. God will give you the courage and strength to do as David did when he found himself in another rough place, which is just to courage yourself in the Lord. As you do this, continue to believe that you will indeed see the goodness of the Lord here among the living, especially now in this time of economic stress. Believe God's word and with courage wait patiently for him no matter what it looks like nor how it feels you stand on god word walk it out by faith as you just wait on the lord um i feel like that applies to a lot because today in time we know and what god has promised us to promise to give us and everything that we can have if we just trust in him but it's like once we are faced with an obstacle or we feel discouraged or the enemy try to get us, we automatically forget that we're supposed to just keep going and trust in the word that God has told us. Because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have made it as far as we already have on this journey anyway. And we got to look like he had to be in us anyway to get us started. So, now excuse me, I got digestive problems, indigestion, whatever it is. But anyway like david did even though he had made it nowhere near what he knew that god had promised him to be he just he remembered god had promised it to him and he looked for god, to god for courage and he kept god's words in his heart and he kept that and that let him and that let him knew and helped him have the faith and to get to his position as king because he knew that the one time he gave up or didn't have god in his heart or remember what god had told him he wouldn't have never reached it and that's what a lot of us don't understand. We want what God wants us to have. But we don't want to go through what we got to go through to get there. And on the way, we don't want to credit God for what he has brought us from. Or what he has, the things he has gave us and provided us with on the journey. And then too, like when we get there, sometimes we forget that if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, the enemy can entice some people too. And give you things but it's only temporary and what god gonna give you is it, it's forever and that's the thing we don't realize like y'all be looking at people having all this stuff and doing all this and then the next month you see them you be like dang what they did with all because it was temporary the god didn't give them that anything of the lord is forever but the, if you get it quicker through the enemy that's temporary he the enemy do temporary things to get you to fall into temporary sin and to mislead you from Christ. He mocks Christ. He will give you what you asking God for if he know that he can entice you with old ways. If if you feel like, oh, I still can do all this worldly stuff and get what I want, I'm going to do it. 
instead of going through God to get it and it being forever. And then too, if it's not of God, you ain't gonna be happy in it. You gonna have all this stuff and still be missing that one piece. But you can't get that piece that you missing if you if you're not with Christ, if you're not walking through his word to God. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's off subject, but I feel like they need to be said too. But yeah, we need to keep our faith and just walk in the word and just remember that God, what he promised us, it is for us. It's just up to us. If we re we read it and willing to stand in that fight and go after it. And the prayer says, Lord, today I call on you to provide me with the strength and the courage to stand on your word and wait patiently as you work your goodness, your good pleasure in my life. I do believe and trust that I will see your goodness in my life in this land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen. And the day my preacher preached about, um, I mean, he said, God can give you good things here on earth just as he promised you in heaven. But you have to be for him to get it. You have to go through some things with him to get it. And it just, it ain't going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. God can bless you on earth just as he's going to do in heaven. He said, on earth as it is in heaven. But anyways, the reflection question, have I made up my mind to set my will to trust the Lord? Yes, I have. Where do I turn when time seems just too hard to bear? And that's a good question too, because sometimes it's like we feel like we just go through so much we ain't got nobody. But that's the thing we forget we got the Lord. He always there. Whether you choose him or not, I feel like he always going to be there. And he told us that he that bring your problems to him. Which is that's what you're supposed to do. When you, when you feel like something too hard for you to bear, you're supposed to put it on him. Because our, our little frames and our vessels are too flimsy to handle stress. And it says that in the Bible. So we're supposed to handle all our battles to him. Do I know how to wait? Or do I patiently try to solve all things for myself? And see, that's what we mess up too, trying to solve stuff for ourselves. We get in a fix or a bind and we be like, what I got to do to get out of this? When all we have to do is pray and hand it over to our Father. But we try to fix it. And even if those are temporary fixes, we do it. And then we turn right around and be faced with the same problem again. Just hand it over. And for implementation, it says, to wait patient on God requires you to seek the peace of God. You will need his peace to sit and wait for him to do all that he promised to do. Find the peace you need by spending regular quality time studying and meditating on his word. This will strengthen your heart and keep you encouraged. Um, the power scriptures are, but if we hope for what we see not, then do we pay, have patience to wait for it? They're just saying like the things we want, we can't see it yet, but do we have the patience to wait on God to give it to us? The next one, oh, and it came from Romans 8 and 25. The next one is rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. This Psalms 37 and 7. Um, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. This Lamentations 3 and 25. Truly my soul waiteth, waiteth up, truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectations for him. Psalm 62, 1 through 5. But yeah. What my, one of my favorite songs by Mary Cedar, Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He will renew. And the the readings today was just wait. So if we learn to just wait, and then my pastor talked about too about standing still. Sometimes we try to move too quick and say stuff out of term and out of text. And I think I said that in another um another vlog. We gotta learn to just stand still. And it says stand still. Let the Lord fight your belt. Yeah, and I keep looking at the um that ring light in my glasses. I'm so weak. But anyway. Um for the scripture, I've been reading Deuteronomy. I made it to <clears throat> where have I made it to? Mm. Wait 
I think I'm on. I didn't put my little mark in here, but I think I'm on Deuteronomy 18. Um, Deuteronomy has 34 chapters. And y'all, this is how I knew when I started sleeping, when I started reading Deuteronomy, because I read the first three pages, then I thought, then I'm like, okay, I, tomorrow I read. Then I read like to, to chapter six, and then I stopped. When I supposed to be doing, I've been doing 10 pages a day. And I didn't do those 10 pages. So I could have been done. I'm just now on chapter 18 because I've been letting my flesh win me over. But the other night, last night, um, Oh, yes, I am. Yeah. I'm on 18, I mean. But, um, I could have been done redo the run. It wouldn't have took me three days if I had been doing 10 pages like I was supposed to. Because I got done reading what all books have I read? And I haven't read every book. I've so far I've only read Genesis, Luke, Matthew, John, Proverbs, and now I'm reading uh Deuteronomy. Mm, yeah, I'm reading Deuteronomy. But so far it's only talked about Um, Moses and how um him and the Israelites made it out of Egypt. Well, how he led the Israelites out of Egypt and how bad they complained and um how he had to beg God not to you know just forget about him or destroy him because they were his chosen people and how uh. Uh, how even Moses was going to be punished for some things because he failed to show God faith when they was at the, um, I forgot what part they was in, but they didn't have anything to drink and he brought the water out of a rock or whatever. But yeah, and he's been talking about how, um, how the people of the city were, he was warning the people of, where well, he was warning the Israelites not to be drawn into the ways of the people of the cities that they was taking over with the way they worshiped their gods and how they had idols and how they worshiped the sun and the stars and the moon and how not he was like yeah he created it but you're not supposed to be you know um drawn into worshiping those things so he was warning them before they got there not to do all this stuff and um before he was ble he blessed them with their land and um what else Oh, he said, like, no man has ever seen me. So how could you worship some saying, you know, you not saying not to worship him, but he was like, no man has ever seen me. So don't let no object that you place in your hand get the worship saying it's me because it's not. So you're not supposed to be worshiping all of the sun and the moon and all of that stuff. And I mean... I'm just saying what the Bible says. I'm not trying to make anybody mad or step on any toes. Um, oh, but it, it's actually right here. It says, it's in verse chapter 17. When you begin living in the town the Lord your God has given you, a man or woman among you might do evil in the sight of the Lord your God and violate the covenant. For instance, they might serve other gods, worship the sun, the moon, or any other stars, the forces of heaven, which I have strictly forbidden. You're not supposed to do that. And then it talked about giving to the poor and all the stuff you're not supposed to eat and you can't eat. And um, they be laughing at me because they say, you know, we're not supposed to be living in the Old Testament. But like I tell them, I'll be trying to tell everybody, everybody's journey with God is not going to be the same. And, I mean, I just started reading the Bible, so I feel like maybe the things he had me, having me to read right now are the things 
he want me to focus on. And it's just that, I mean, everybody walk just gonna be different. And I feel like he really speaking to me about this stuff. Yeah, y'all saying don't live in the Old Testament. We supposed to be living in the New Testament. But like I said, I'm living by both Testaments. I mean, whatever the Lord said do, I'm gonna do. Whatever he said don't do, I'm not gonna do. Can't no wrong go in it. And I feel like too, with the Old Testament, a lot of people be saying don't live in it, but you still use the stuff out of it that applies to your situation to make it fit around your life. Like certain things in the Old Testament, you feel like, okay, well, I'm gonna use that against people. But then something else, I do or say you saying don't um you're not supposed to be living in the old testament but I mean everybody walk this different and I feel like this how he got me going so I'm gonna go that way but yeah I don't know what I'm gonna read after I read Deuteronomy um what's after this Joshua's after Deuteronomy I don't know. But I know I'm not gonna read it on here though. Um I thought I'd just come back and talk with y'all about that, do the devotion and let y'all know where I was and what I'm doing now and oh like two I'm gonna tell y'all the truth like I done lost weight 8,000 times and like this has been the only time that I've lost weight and haven't gained it back but see the first time I think okay this will be part of my testimony too but I'm not recording my testimony yet but so anyway the first time I lost weight God had just delivered me from some other things and I lost the weight, but I was doing it for the wrong reason. I was doing it to be noticed, I feel. So, I lost the weight, and I was going through depression and having anxiety then, too. So, I lost the weight, but I was still unhappy. So, what I do, I gained the weight back. Then, I lost it again for the same reasons and for attention and to feel like I'll be seen by people, and I still was unhappy. And so, like, it wasn't until I dedicated myself to the Lord and told him I want to change for him and stuff, and I started losing weight, and it's been the only time that the weight has stayed off of me. And what really, y'all really want to know what, like, what happened, y'all be saying, they be saying don't leave in the Old Testament, but when I eat, not, when I eat like Daniel did, when he challenged the God, I mean the guards, so that him and his friends would eat, only the things that God provided them and the other people will eat the things that the kings provided them basically like a vegan diet like I only eat well, eating brown rice and corn and wheat with no yeast and stuff like that when I was eating it and I stayed full and that was the thing too and then like I start I love seafood but I stopped eating the um I stopped eating shrimp I don't I don't even eat fish no more. I really don't eat fish. But like, you know, you can eat fish. It's safe to eat fish as long as it have fins and scales. But if you don't have both, you can't eat it. But I just I just haven't had fish in a while. Not that I'm no I'm not gonna eat it, but I haven't had it in a while. And um I had stopped eating beef because beef was doing me kinda bad with like acid reflux and stuff. But like when I was eating like the Bible say you should eat. Or when I do eat like the Bible say you should eat my weight can't stand a chance and like now i mean it's been a minute since i ate like Daniel or even ate like um well i i mean not what well, i just say i haven't ate like daniel in a minute or even like just um proportion my stuff out or whatever but i uh I still haven't gained no weight back. If I did, it was only like one or two pounds. And I think that's good for over a month. And I spent other, compared to me all the other times, gaining like 20, 30 pounds right back after I stopped doing something. But since I've been doing it the Lord's way, it's been staying off. And like, I mean, maybe it's just me, but that's how I feel. Um, So I'm going to 
keep doing that and I had been doing fasting too where I was just fasting 12 hours a day at first but yesterday I fast for 24 hours for the first time and y'all it wasn't hard at all it's it's a mind thing but two you have to feel yourself up on the word when you fast you have to feel yourself up on the word and um I know you're not supposed to tell nobody that you fast but I'm not I mean I only fast the day so the fast is over but I'm just telling y'all to enlighten y'all I fasted yesterday and that was my first time fasting and think about somebody that eat all throughout the day like well not really eat but snacking on stuff all I did was drink water and I drunk those um what was the stuff mm. oh those sparkling water but you know it don't have no sugar no caffeine none of that stuff in there all natural flavors so I drunk like one bottle of that and I just drunk water throughout the day and I still did my day work like I normally do throughout the day and I wasn't hungry at all but I listened to sermons while I did my work and I listened to gospel music all yesterday and I read my Bible and my devotion before I went to bed and y'all I was not hungry the whole 24 hours but so but the thing about it is when you fast you have to feel yourself upon the word and do the Lord's will and that way you know you won't be hungry because you it say I don't survive off bread alone. I survive off the word of the most high. So yeah, I just thought I'd tell y'all that. Um I really don't have nothing else to tell y'all. I might try to get the ring do the run minute tonight because it's only thirty four chapters. I'm on nineteen, eighteen, nineteen now. That's not that much. But I'm not gonna try to force it. I'm not going to vlog tomorrow. I might vlog. Depending on what time I get back home Tuesday night, I'll probably vlog the devotion with y'all Tuesday night. I know I'll be back Wednesday. But yeah. That's about it. So, I don't even know if I said welcome to the channel, but welcome back, my lovelies. Because it's been a while. Mmm. But that's all I have for right now. So I guess I'll see y'all whenever I pick up the camera again. Yeah, why is it so hot out here? But I said I'm coming back today. But here I am. Um, we are gonna do car devotional. And excuse me, I'm hungry. Today is twenty-two. And it's called Check Your Motives. So, the um, starting scripture is the heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is this not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Micah 3 11. Um, and it's the same book. First paragraph says the first paragraph. I want y'all to be able to hear me. That's why I'm scooching on up. But the first paragraph says the people of God in this passage of Scripture had lost their integrity and thus their motives had become impure and defiled. They were not serving God from pure heart, but their motives had become shallow and based in greed. They continued to do God's work. But with these impure motives, they thought that the lower hand of protection and care was still upon them. God says that we should be careful to not mistake the increase in our life that we obtain because of wrong motives as blessings from him. And I think I said that last night. It is robbery and he will hide his face from us. Basically saying like, 
you people be doing all this wrongdoing and then and you like sometimes we can wonder like dang they don't do nothing right they don't do nothing for the lord they don't help nobody but yet they got all of this stuff it's not from the lord it's not and then too god will start to bless some of us and we'll get besides ourselves and start being okay like some of the christian influencers not all of them but some of them and some pastors and and stuff like they start doing the work of the lord with pure intent at first but then once they start seeing how blessed they can be in the lord's work they get beside themselves and forget they're doing it for the lord and start doing it for all the stuff that they gaining and using the lord's name and his word in vain when they really don't only care about the benefits that they reaping so now that they're not doing out their heart anymore paragraph two as God was revealing this to me, I had to quickly examine myself and all that God is doing in my life now. While going through the process of transition, we must be careful that our motives are pure and we are doing all that we do for God out of love. Matthew 22, 37 says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. It is possible to, to, to have wrong motives when you have fallen in love with God with every fiber of your being. This is only the thing that will move God. You seeking and serving him out of love. When your motives are pure and you are operating in love, that you can be assured that the goodness you are experiencing in your life is indeed because of the process of the transition that you are going through as you are learning of God's provision, as opposed to it being from wrong motives and God's wrath will eventually come upon you. So like, um, if, if God God know I'm pretty sure well, everybody know that he know the things we do if we're doing it because of pure intent or if we're doing it for evil or for monetary or or um what's the word or praise because you know some people like the effect of people wanting them to want everybody to follow they they like to the follow rather than liking what they're supposed to be doing because if I was doing my YouTube for the following, I would have been quit because ain't nobody following me. You know what I'm saying? And if it was for the monetary gain, then I would have been quit too because I ain't earning it from this. Well, I'm earning something from the Lord, but you know, like what a lot of other YouTubers get, I'm not getting. And I'm just doing my part. Okay, well, a backstory from this part for me. When I first started my YouTube, it was nothing for the Lord. And I was doing it because I wanted to be like the other YouTube people and I wanted to have what they had. Then God quickly changed it and turned it around to let me know that I didn't need to do what they was doing and I didn't need the things they had because he had better for me and the better for me is what's gonna be in heaven. And that um, I needed to stop, I had to stop looking at what they had and being like, dang, I want that, I want that. And to be thankful for what I already have you know what I'm saying and I'm not saying all youtubers do it but like a lot of them they got all they got get all this fame and money and you never hear none of them talk about God or saying they thank God for how far he has brought them and um, I'm not saying all of them do it but half of them don't even give back or help the need you know what I'm saying so it's like they're not doing it with the pure heart when God bless you with something or increase he's not doing it for you to boast and brag and show everybody what you have he blessing you so you can be a blessing to he oh my bad he blessing you so you can be a blessing to somebody else if that makes sense we don't want to treat god as our sweet sugar daddy in heaven and only seek that he can do for us but with pure motives we will seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness I took the time to repent for any wrong motives I may have had in my heart and confess that I, I have fallen in love with him and asked him to purify my motives to line up with him and his word and may all that I do for him be out of his love I have for him in the kingdom. When our motives are pure, we don't have to seek things because if we seek God and are pleasing to him and faithful, the things will find us. I heard a scripture quoted on yesterday and added it to this phrase at the end of it. Be yet steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. If your motive for your work is pure, so examine your heart today and make sure that everything you do for God comes out of pure out of a pure motive. 
because a lot of times we do stuff but it's only for temporary gain and two like the motive behind things aren't sometimes uh, behind the stuff we do oftentimes aren't good and i mean i'm pretty sure a lot of us know that like some stuff we do we do it for ourselves and we don't care if nobody else benefit or hurt from it like certain stuff like you do stuff just say like a person who steal yeah you stealing because at the time it's gonna benefit you but in the end it's hurting somebody else because you stealing something that they worked hard for and then they earn so the motives behind it's not good at the moment you don't care because it's, it's benefiting you and that's not a good motive because you should consider other people too like the motives you have for things should be okay it's gonna help me but is it gonna hurt somebody else or if, if it's gonna help me can i help somebody else with it or if it's helping me will i be able to show god's will through it you know what i'm saying so everything you do it's supposed to be for the lord because whether we know it or not we were created our vessels our bodies are just vessels for a spirit and we were created to spread solely to spread god's word to do his works and the gifts and talents that he gave to us he didn't give them to us for bad us to have bad motives or momentary things he gave it to us to use our gifts to spread his word and to spread and like if we're not using our gifts to spread his word then we're not doing it with good motive or good intention because like he gave me a creative mind like i'm very creative and um i make cakes and so like my treat business had fell out but i really i wasn't doing it for you know like he's weird i wasn't acknowledging his the sabbath i was just making any and every kind of treat and like now i want to incorporate in my business where you know saturdays i don't do nothing i don't accept money and all that kind of stuff and then two like halloween i'm not gonna make any halloween treats basically only like i mean i know we're not supposed to celebrate birthdays and stuff too but if it's a cake i feel like this fine so it'll be just like a birthday cake um wedding cakes you know stuff like that i'm not doing any holiday stuff that you know you y'all get what i'm trying to say y'all should know by now i'm not that good at explaining stuff but anyway yeah so i want to incorporate that in my business and since he blessed me with another business but it's in the works so i don't want to say nothing yet and i kind of hate i said something already but then again it's not bad because i put something about it on snapchat and it's kind of like it slowed the process slowed down a little bit but it's okay because i had a few people inboxing me like all right have you started doing it yet what well you know what's the tea but it's in the works and i'm gonna make a whole video about it once i start once it gets you know all the way there um but anyway i got all off subject but yeah a lot of stuff people do the motors aren't good at all and the motors is supposed to solely be for god and to lead his children back to him and if you're not doing that then what are you doing and the prayer for this one says father today examine my heart and if you find anything within within that is not pure of pure motives then reveal it to me and i will be quick to repent and ask that you purify my motives in seeking and serving you allow your love to be my guide in all that i do for you in your kingdom in jesus name amen and the first question is when was the last time i sat down with god and checked my motives for the things i do for him and we don't do that too often we don't care as long as we feel like we're gaining from it the motive's good or not we don't care and that's something i need to do i need to check my motives like lord what i'm am i what i'm doing is it for you but i do pray that and whenever i pray i always pray that the things i'm doing and the gifts and talents he's giving me i'm using them to fulfill his word and do his will i always pray that secondly do i always come to god with a request or do i enjoy spending time with him because of love and after the time that's what a lot of us do too we fail to go to god just to be thankful and just to talk every time we go to him is either when we in a struggle or when we want some 
We can never just go to him and be thankful. We always go to him when we want, want, want. Even though he gonna give, we need to learn to go to him and just talk and be thankful. You know what I'm saying? Even for the good and the bad, because it was a lesson that came out of all of them. To three, does my devotion include desire, discipline, or delight? And I kind of feel like all of those can go bad way, both good and bad. Cause like sometimes, like I was telling y'all, some people devote their life to God just for the things that they know he can bring them, but not to shoot soulfully do it to spread his word. So that's coming like with a desire. You, They desire him for what they can have here on earth and not what they're really gonna get when they get to heaven. With the discipline, um, how can I say it? They, I don't know, they do a discipline too with the people who do it just for the fame and stuff. I feel like they pretend to show that discipline, but behind closed doors, they are a whole raft that's left let loose. And for delight, I think the delight would be the things that they get. That's the only thing they do it for is the is the the happiness that they feel comes from the things that they they get, like the money and the fame and all that stuff. But in a good way, we desire the Lord as our Lord and Savior died on the Christ. I mean, died on the cross. <laughs> he died on the cross for our sins, and we desire to have a, a a life with Him, a relationship with Him. And for him to be our mediator, because whether we know it or not, when we get to the old heaven gates, God is like a lawyer. He'll be like, I mean, Jesus is the lawyer. He'll be like, that God, yeah, I, I know. I, he, he, he can let him go. I seen the work he did. This a good, this a good one of your kids. You know, he can vouch for you. But yeah, we should desire. We desire a wholehearted relationship with him. Two discipline, yeah. Um. The ones who do it, you can tell the discipline because like when you start being disciplined in Christ, a lot of times the people you normally hang around, they be like, you change or what's wrong with you or you don't do this no more, you don't do that no more, you don't go here no more. But there's just a discipline showing in you like you know you're not supposed to be doing it and, and enjoying all the things of this world. So you're not doing it no more and that's the discipline. And the bad discipline for that would be the people who act like they follow Christ, but they still clue, they still drink. They still smoke, you know what I'm saying? So, and the delight would be, <clears throat> the light would be, you know, you're doing it for God and you're doing it in a good way. You're going to reap those benefits here in, on earth and in heaven. But you're going to know that the true benefit is going to be those benefits of heaven when you go through those pearly gates. Um, implementation, examine yourself and ask God to purify your heart so that your thoughts and works will always be to please him. Seek humility for it, it for it is the key to freedom from pride and selfishness. And it's four power scriptures. The first one is, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith Prove your own selves. Know ye not that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be, re, 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 except ye be reprobates. I don't know. Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Then humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. James four and ten. I forgot the Bible verse. It says, "Exalt yourself, and you will be humble. But humble yourself, and you will be exalted." So saying too, that's like um. I can use that as a YouTube thing too. Like a lot of these YouTube people exalt themselves, feeling like, and, and famous people in general exalt themselves, thinking that they're more than everybody else because of what they have, what they persuade to have. And then, and like doing all this and talking down to other people, but then they lose the whole channel, the whole following, they go broke. They exalted themselves to so what the Lord did, He humbled them. But if you if you have all these things, but you don't throw it in other people's faces and make them feel bad for what they don't have or all this stuff, you humble yourself, God gonna exhaust you. He gonna give you more than you already got. But a lot of people fail to realize it. And the last one says, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one 
instead of up another. And that's just like those people who you feel like they feel like they got more than you and they be trying to do all that stuff and make you feel bad. He'll put them in your position quick and you'll be in theirs and they'll be like, how that happen? He put them down and put you up. He gonna set a table in front of your enemies. Just that simple. Just remember that God clap back is way worse than your clap back can be. So when people do stuff to you, don't try to handle it yourself. Hand it to the God and, and he gonna handle it real good. But anyways, that's the devotion for today. I'm about to eat before I pull off. Cause I'm hungry. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all, I just came back to show y'all my pimpus. I found it on side the road. And I looked up on TikTok and it said you're supposed to wait two to three weeks when I hang it upside down and all that stuff. But I didn't feel like doing all that. So I cut the stems, I sprayed it with the hairspray. And these are three separate things from Dollar General. And the base was like $10. This little thing was like $3. And I think they were like $6. And I just put them together with some tape. So I just wanted to show y'all that. That's gonna be cute. I might move about a mirror for when I take pictures. But yeah, and then I found this thick, it's thick y'all. It's a throw blanket. I got that from Dollar General and it was $15. And also, I changed this table around. I'ma put, uh, my friend sent me some old pants, but she had bought me some short stem ones and I'ma put them in there. So whenever my brother bring me those, I'll show y'all. But yeah, I just came to show y'all that because I'm excited, so. Wednesday, today ain't Wednesday, Tuesday. I just got home, I had me a shower, I'm about to eat and go to bed, but um, so what time is it? 7.57. I gotta do something, but it shouldn't take me no more than an hour and 30 minutes, so. Yeah, that's it, but whenever I put the pampas in there, I'll be back. Yeah, this the one my friend gave me, so. And I did, I think I showed y'all that I did it like this. It's so cute, cute, cute. Cute, cute, cute. I am so tired. And I don't think nobody can understand how tired I am. <clears throat> Plus one of these little problems I got going on is just, I don't feel good at all today. But I'm not gonna let it get the best of me. I gotta go to the my place. I should have been got up, but I couldn't get up. But it's okay. I'm going out. And then I forgot about a cake. I don't know why I thought this weekend was the 22nd when tomorrow is the 22nd, I think. So Saturday is the 24th when the cake is needed. But like when I have to go somewhere, I make the cake before I leave home and my mom just get a piece of the cake. And mind you, I've already last month, I made this, this, I started making the stuff for the party because I thought the cake was for last month, but it was, it was for this month. And then I forgot until the girl just texted me and was like, what time we meet to get the cake Saturday? And I'm like, Lord, I thought the cake was next weekend. I don't know. For some reason, I just can't get my months, my days, my weeks, none of that in order, but. I'm not going to stress myself. So, I'm headed to the mountains. I made me a coffee. I ain't used to those. Yeah, I see those skills. 
<laughs> but yeah, I'm tired, but I'm not. I gotta get up. I have no choice. So, oh, and I put me a um, I put an uncrustable in it, in the uh, what is it called? The air fryer. Cause I like it crunchy like toast. But I might see y'all in Walmart or I might just see y'all when I get back home. But either way, I'll be back. I don't know. Y'all, some these buttons are pressed on the camera. I don't know what it is, but anyways. I'm at my granddaddy house. I brought him some food. Waiting on him to come outside. Then I'm going to make these cakes. I got me two dresses and a cardigan for church. And I got this on my hair gel. I think this gonna last two more days. I'm not taking it down, so I'm just gonna gel it over. I had to give me some fries and sweet and sour sauce so because I was hungry. I knew I was going to put I suppose we bought me some more earrings. But my camera died. There it is. Huh? You got your glasses on. Gotta have them on. You can see that good without them. I can see, but it just be blurry. But you can't see them. I'm a little blur. I got a place for to go fish. I showed to you one day when you ever go. I, you back there going, I might not be able to go. I'm talking about, you talking about the one on 183? Oh, 183. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to let you take me cook. If I have time, um. Hi. We are back for devotion, and and we are on day 23. Don't y'all know I could not find this book? I read out this book every day, and I could not find it. Like, why? But anyway, today's um, reading is called Cover Me. And I'm too lazy to put my camera on the tripod, so I'm holding it in my hand. But it's labeled, cover me. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Psalms 91 and 4. And the first paragraph says, All true believers know that on this journey we will be faced with insurmountable troubles that we on our own are not equipped to deal with. Therefore, we trust we must rely on something greater than ourselves to protect us. This is the picture that Jesus was giving the leaders of Israel in Matthew 23 and 7, about 23 and 37, about gathering them together as a hen does her chickens under her wings. By instinct, she not only protects them, but calls them under that protection when she sees them in danger, and not only keeps them safe, but cherishes them and keeps them warm. This is the comparison that God makes to the care of his people. So, you know, basically the first paragraph is saying like how we go through stuff and especially like when you change for the better and stop doing a lot of worldly things and um, you try to live more for Christ, you're going to face a lot of stuff and you're going to feel like um, you're going to feel like it's so much happening and it's just the devil and stuff trying to defer you and deter you from doing what you know is right and you should trust that God will have you God has you under his wing and he's protecting you and no matter what you go through he's going to protect you no matter what you face he's going to protect you but it's up to you to believe that he's going to protect you because like if you don't have no faith that he can do something for you then why she you know so like when um 
something like if something going on in your life i kind of feel like two that can play on like when people start going through stuff in life and a lot of times often we don't get this the, get the desire to get closer to god until we're going through something in life and we, then we want him to bring us under our wing instead of you know thanking him for being there during the times we didn't even notice you know um the second paragraph says when the storms of life are raging, God will cover me. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will cover me. When the fiery darts and when the fiery darts are thrust at me, God will cover me. For in the time of trouble, He said He will hide me in His pavilion, that He will take me under His wings to protect me. He promised to cover me when fear tries to take hold of me. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, He will cover me. I am covered under His shadow from all harm and danger. Therefore, no evil shall baffle me, nor any plague come now in my dwelling. When I pass through the waters, he will cover me. When I walk through the fire, he will cover me. Because I trust in him, he will cover me. And they're just saying to me, basically, no matter what you go through in life, God won't co gonna, gonna cover you. But it's up to you to trust he's going to cover you. Because that's just like, okay, you got a friend. Or your wife, your husband, your uh, family member, anything. And they tell you that they're going to always be there for you. And when the time comes for them to do something for you, but you don't trust in them to do it, and you showing to them that you don't trust them to do the, to help you or to be there for you. So they just to have choose not to because like if you don't trust me to do it or just say somebody tell you they're gonna do something for you and you like okay and you leave it in their hands but then at the same time you showing them that you don't trust them to do it or that they're gonna do you do right by you by the things you saying to them and the actions you showing to them so that you're like you know what i ain't gonna even do it you know you gotta have faith in that you gotta have in order for that thing to work you gotta have faith that they gonna do it for you so that's just like saying you gotta still have faith that god gonna be there for you even though you know he there for you you still have to have the faith that he gonna be there to protect you because you know sometimes it be the way well, it gonna be the devil nine ten out of ten in the back of your head make you think there ain't nobody there for you and that god not gonna protect you like he say and try to make you not have that trust no more but he, he gonna be there for you and have to trust me, but you have to trust him. You gotta have faith that he's gonna be there for you. Under the shadow of the Almighty is the place of protection. For us to be shielded from all the attacks of the enemy requires for us to take a position of refuge under his wings and be covered by his feathers. God is willing to guard his people as the hen is to guard her chickens. Trust God today and make him the refuge and hiding place and he will protect you. So basically, they're just like saying what we said about the paragraph above this one. That um, he gonna be there for you. You just gotta know. You should. You know that he gonna be there for you. But then you still have to trust that he gonna be there for you. Um, I be trying to uh, like apply stuff to things that go on in our everyday life to help people understand what I'm trying to say. Cause I'm bad at explaining stuff. But just like in a relationship, you have to have trust in your partner that they're going to be there for you and that they're not going to harm you. And if you don't trust that person to do what they say they're going to do, then it's not going to work. Because that's just like saying faith without work is dead. You had the faith, but you got to show me you got the faith for it to work. So your actions got to prove that. So you saying that you trust God to do this for you. Show me that you trust him to do it. Show me that you trust him to protect you. You can't be walking with doubt and fear in your mind. And saying you trust that God is going to do such and such and that he helped for you. That's just like saying you believe in God. And you walking in Christ. And you you know you accept him as your Lord and Savior. But at the same time your actions are not showing it. You are still doing everything against his word. I mean, you're not showing. You gotta, you, you gotta show it. You gotta show him. You trust him, and you got faith in him. So that's all.
And the prayer says, Lord, thank you for your protection. You provide me for the storms of life. You cover me with your feathers and give me peace in the midst of it all. Lord, I trust you to always keep me safe from all harm and danger and to redirect my path when I'm heading for it. You are my refuge and my shield, and I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The first question says, since you know trouble will come, what have you decided to do in the midst of it? So basically it's saying you're going to trust God to handle it, or you're going to stress and make it worse. The second question says, who or what do you trust as your security blanket in prayerless times? Do you trust man or the Lord? Can't trust both. Have you positioned yourself to receive the protection you need during the storms of life? And that's basically like what I just said about um, walking in Christ. And like you're saying you believe in Him and stuff, but you're not showing it. You have to show Him that you believe in Him. And that you know His words are true. Hold on, my camera dying. Okay, we're back. We're back. And for implementation, it says to receive the protection that you need, build an intimate relationship with God and receive his awesome love that he has made available to you. Trust in him and position yourself for safety by obediently serving him. And see, I hadn't even read that part yet. And like I said, you you got to walk in Christ. You can't only just believe in Christ, but to believe is to be like Him. The ultimate goal is to be like Christ. So you have to walk and follow His footsteps. And the only way to do that is do as He did. So you can't be saying, like I said earlier, you just can't be saying you believe in God, but you're still out here doing everything under the sun. And I can't judge because like, before I, I mean, before I fully, fully dedicated myself, I, I used to go out all the time. I used to drink, party, all that stuff. But it like after, after me fully committing and surrendering, I don't do that stuff no more. It's like, and you will know when, 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 when God is calling you because those things, those worldly things that you enjoy so much, they're going to start to feel like, how can I put it? They're going to start feeling just so unworthy, which they are anyway. But, you know, you used to you used to love doing those things, but then you're going to start to feel like, why am I here or why am I doing it? Like when I used to, have, used to go out before I stopped, like I'd go and then I'd just be like, so I'd be so miserable. I'd be so ready to go home and be like, why did I even come? I don't even want to be here. So then I just stopped going. Period. And then, two, I stopped listening to um, rap and all this. I don't even listen to R&B, blues, none of that. I only listen to gospel music. And before I stopped, everybody knew Kevin Gates was my favorite rapper. Like, I used to listen to nothing but Kevin Gates. And now, it's like looking back at some of the stuff. I mean, no shade to him, but looking back to some of the stuff he used to say in his songs and some of the stuff he did, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what? And this was your favorite rapper? But yeah, I mean, once you start walking to Christ, a lot of stuff going to start, your eyes, your eyes and your mind, your heart, your spirit, all of them going to be open up to so much stuff. You're going to start to see and understand so many things that you didn't even realize before you accepted Christ. And that's the thing, people, you're not going to understand stuff and you're going to be dead to stuff until you dead your soul to the world and open it up to God, if that makes sense. Okay, but that's, I'm saving that for another vlog. And this is four power scriptures. The first one says, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall shut me up upon a rock. Psalms 27 and 5. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91 and 1. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Psalms 62 and 6. What day that was? 23. Y'all, it's only 30 days in the book. And we're on day 23. We could have been through the book. But, you know, once you start getting closer, how that go? But I'm not going to keep blaming it on it because I could have fought it. But I didn't fight it like I was supposed to. But I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm trying to mark for day 24 because y'all know I'll be forgetting what day we've been in red. But yeah. Oh, let me tell y'all something funny. The train been running a lot lately. <laughs> so one night I went to bed. I mean, I was laying in bed watching TV or something. I was watching, well, I don't even watch TV. I watch YouTube. So I was watching something on YouTube. I don't know if it was somebody's vlog or a sermon, but I was watching something. And, and y'all, on another note too, like, I watch vlogs all the time. Don't y'all know now it's like, I don't be having the urge to watch vlogs no more. Like some of the people I love, I used to love to watch. And it's like, when I watch them now, it's like, I be like, mm -mm. but I don't know. I guess I'm just walking in the steps of my father and opening up to some things. But I wanna, I'm want i going to make a whole separate video about YouTube. But I got to, you know, y'all know I'm going to have to write my thoughts down for that. But back to the story. So, I was watching YouTube or something, and I fell asleep, and I guess I didn't, well, you know how you fall asleep and don't know you've been fell asleep. And the train started going. Yeah. Why did I jump up? I thought it was the home ones. I thought the Lord had came back. Baby, I jumped up. <laughs> I told my friend about it. She was so tickled at me, and it was funny because she said her niece did the same thing one night. I said, Lord, I said, the Lord came back. I jumped up. I said, let me, I'm all out the one. I, I, I just about went to the door and still on the put. I'm like, you not finna leave me. I heard, I said, then I, and then it like, my mind clicked and I said, it's the train. And I thought about it because I hear the train now. I'm like, it's the train good. And I had to laugh at myself, but y'all, I'm going to end the vlog here. What's today? It's. Wednesday the 21st. I think I did three days. Did I start Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? What's tomorrow? No, I didn't start Sunday. I don't know when I start. Probably Monday. But anyway, um, I'll see y'all next vlog. I gotta edit this one. Hopefully, I have time to edit it and then I can upload it probably like Saturday or something. Because I haven't been uploading lately. I might have two videos for y'all. But yeah, I'll see y'all next vlog. Be blessed. Walk in Christ. And I want y'all to know that no matter where you are, it's never too late to start. Jesus was 33 when he started his ministry. So it's never too late. I'm just, I'm 27 and I just not decided to like, I know a lot of people feel like they're young, but I'm like, if I had been walking right the whole time, I wouldn't have went through half the stuff I went through, but all of it was lessons, so I can't. I can't look at that. And then I want y'all to know um, that you're not in it alone. When you start a journey with Christ, you're going to feel like you're alone, but you're not because He's always there. And He separates you for a reason. And people are going to start falling out of your life for a reason. And I had to learn like it's not the people, it's God separating me. It's like literally, I just be by myself unless I'm around um, the lady that I ride to school with every day. So, yeah. And I mean, I be around my family and stuff, but like hanging out and stuff and being with people and texting all the time, stuff like I used to. My phone don't even ring. But yeah. And oh, another funny thing before my mama, husband, he told, because y'all know I got baptized Sunday, and he told her, he said, um, he said, babe, it's going to be hard for Shaquille to find a boyfriend now. 
She need got baptized. I ain't even think about that right now. He, the man God got for me gonna come when the time right. When God feel the foolish, finish working with him and when he through working with me, that's when he gonna come. I ain't even stressed about it. I've been single all these years, 27 years, so. I'm not even thinking about that. But y'all have a good night. Because it is 10 o'clock. And I gotta read my Bible. And then I'm going to bed. So yeah. See y'all next time.